Cop follows little girl who lost in street. He bursts into tears when he sees. In the heart of the bustling city, the streets buzzed with the hum of life. Neon signs blinked intermittently, casting their colors on wet pavements. Pedestrians hurried past storefronts, and cars zipped by, leaving trails of light in the dusk. Amongst this, Officer Jacob Miller walked his beat. The weight of his uniform was familiar, and the rhythm of his steps was steady. Despite the energy of the city, he had developed an acute sense for anomalies. It was a skill honed over years of patrolling these same streets. A swift movement caught his eye, a petite figure, almost a shadow darting through the alleyways. Slowing his pace, Jacob strained to see more clearly. There, amidst the growing darkness, was a little girl, her face strained with urgency, her eyes wide with fear, her tiny frame, no older than eight, seemed engulfed by the city around her. The slight raggedness of her clothes, coupled with her frantic pace, painted a picture of desperation. A pang of concern gripped Jacob. He had a daughter, Emma, the same age, and the thought of her lost and alone in this sprawling urban jungle sent shivers down his spine. Guided by paternal instincts, he began to follow the girl, maintaining a discreet distance. He wanted to ensure she was safe, perhaps even help her find her way home. The girl's path was erratic. She weaved in and out of the maze-like alleys, sometimes pausing to peek inside dumpsters or glance nervously over her shoulder. The evening's fading light cast long shadows, making the city seem ever more vast and intimidating. Jacob felt a growing unease. This wasn't the behavior of a child merely trying to find her way back to familiar territory. He watched as she approached a deserted building its windows boarded up and graffiti decorating its crumbling walls. She seemed to know her way, slipping through a gap in a broken fence and disappearing inside. The sight intensified Jacob's worries. What could compel such a young girl to venture into such places? The parallels between this little girl, who he later learned was named Ava, and his own daughter became impossible to ignore. He imagined Emma, her brown curls bouncing as she ran, her laughter infectious. The juxtaposition of that heartwarming image and the reality unfolding before him was jarring. How would he feel if Emma was the one rummaging through trash and seeking refuge in a dilapidated building? The mere thought was gut-wrenching. As the night deepened, Jacob's initial perception began to shift. This was no ordinary case of a lost child. It was a sobering glimpse into the hidden recesses of the city. It was a tale of survival, of a child forced to fend for herself in a world that seemed to have turned its back on her. Every discarded piece of food Ava retrieved, every wary look she cast, was a testament to her reality. The streets he had walked for years, believing he knew their every secret, now revealed a side that was both haunting and humbling. Beneath the vibrant veneer of the city, stories like Ava's unfolded, often unnoticed. And for Jacob, this realization was transformative. The city's heartbeat, once familiar, now pulsed with a deeper resonance, urging him to see beyond the obvious, to protect and serve in ways he hadn't envisioned before. Jacob had watched from a distance for hours, shadows stretching and shrinking as time passed, but as the city lights began to shine brighter with the setting sun, a newfound determination welled up within him. He had to intervene to offer this young girl the help she so clearly needed. Approaching Ava, Jacob did his best to appear non-threatening. Yet the moment she caught sight of him, Ava's eyes widened and she recoiled instinctively. Her tiny frame trembled, eyes darting left and right searching for an escape route. The streets had taught her to be wary, to distrust, to fear. Recognizing her apprehension, Jacob slowly reached into his jacket, retrieving his badge. The silver emblem gleamed under the street lights, and he showed it to her, hoping to assuage her fears. It's okay, he murmured softly, kneeling to her level. I just want to help. Ava eyed the badge, then met Jacob's gaze. She saw no malice in those blue eyes, only genuine concern. Hesitantly, she stopped her retreat, her guard dropping ever so slightly. Encouraged, Jacob continued, My name's Jacob. I've got a daughter just like you. Can you tell me what's going on? 
And so Ava began her tale. Her voice was soft, quivering at times, yet every word was laden with a gravity that belied her age. She spoke of her search for food, not just for herself, but for her sick mother, who lay weak and feverish in a makeshift shelter they had managed to piece together. Their home was a mere collage of discarded cardboard and tarps hidden in an alley's recess. Her father, once a loving presence, had been consumed by addiction. The loving memories of him reading bedtime stories or playing with her in the park were replaced by those of angry outbursts and eventual abandonment. Their home, their security, was snatched away, leaving them to fend for themselves in the city's cold embrace. Ava recounted nights where the cold seeped into their bones, where the rumbling of their empty stomachs competed with the distant sounds of traffic, and through it all, her mother's strength waned. Each passing day was a battle, not against any visible enemy, but against hunger, cold, and the crushing weight of hopelessness. Jacob listened, his heart heavy with every word. The bustling city around them seemed to fade away, leaving just the two of them in their bubble of shared sorrow. The weight of Ava's reality, the stark contrast of her world to his own, was overwhelming. Tears welled up in his eyes, blurring his vision, as the little girl's tale of despair etched itself onto his soul. In that moment, an epiphany dawned on Jacob. All these years, he'd been chasing after criminals, upholding the law, ensuring justice was served. Yet, here was a crime, a grave injustice, that bore no fingerprints, left no evidence, and had no perpetrator to apprehend. The crime of neglect, of societal apathy, of looking away when a fellow human suffered. Wiping away a tear, Jacob took a deep breath, the gravity of his realization settling in. The most significant crimes weren't always those that left behind a trail, those that were evident. Sometimes they were silent, hidden in plain sight, manifesting in the lost eyes of a little girl searching for food in the sprawling maze of a city that had forgotten her. With the city lights illuminating their path, Jacob led Ava to a nearby diner. The aroma of freshly cooked food wafted through the air as they entered, a stark contrast to the chilly winds outside. The diner, with its worn-out leather booths and checkered floors, held memories of simpler times for Jacob. Today it became a haven for a little girl's dreams. Settling into a booth, Jacob ordered hearty meals for both. As they waited, Ava hesitated, then began to share more of her world. Beyond the harrowing tales of survival, there lay dreams, hopes, and aspirations. She spoke of her love for reading, of worlds she escaped to through the pages of discarded books. Ava dreamt of becoming a teacher, hoping to inspire others with the magic of stories, just as they had given her solace in her darkest hours. Listening intently, Jacob saw past the ragged clothes, then the guarded demeanor. He saw resilience personified. Ava's spirit, undeterred by the challenges she faced, was a testament to the human will's tenacity. Each dream she shared painted a vivid picture, making her stand out, not as another statistic of hardship, but as a beacon of hope amidst adversity. After the meal, Ava's stomach content and her guard lowered, they ventured out to gather supplies. Jacob bought essentials, warm clothing, canned goods, medicines, and a few books to feed Ava's insatiable hunger for stories. Laden with bags, they made their way to Ava's home, her descriptions guiding them to a secluded spot beneath an old city bridge. The shelter was modest, pieced together with whatever materials Ava and her mother could find, yet within its confines there lay a world rich in love and determination. Lydia, Ava's mother, lay on a makeshift bed, her once vibrant eyes were now clouded with pain, but the moment she saw her daughter, they sparkled with relief and love. Jacob introduced himself, extending a hand that Lydia weakly grasped. Despite her frailty, she exuded a quiet strength. Every wrinkle on her face told a story, and her eyes held gratitude, not just for the supplies, but for the kindness shown to her child. As they conversed, Lydia expressed her pride in Ava, her beacon of hope in the overwhelming darkness that had enveloped their lives. For Jacob, meeting Lydia was transformative. 
He realized that his role as a police officer was not merely to enforce the law, but to serve the community, to be its protector in every sense. The badge he wore was not just a symbol of authority, but a reminder of his duty to care for those under his watch, especially the most vulnerable. The evening beneath the bridge was filled with shared stories, laughter, and an understanding that transcended words. As Jacob departed, promising to return and help in any way he could, he carried with him a renewed sense of purpose. The city, with all its complexities, was a tapestry of stories, some of joy and others of despair. And amidst this vast expanse, he realized that upholding the law was not just about chasing down criminals or ensuring justice in courts. It was about showing compassion, understanding the underlying stories, and extending a helping hand whenever possible. The true essence of his duty lay not just in the badge he wore, but in the hearts he touched. The encounter with Ava and Lydia was more than just another day on the beat for Jacob. Their resilience and unwavering spirit resonated deeply within him, sparking a desire to bring about change. He was determined to ensure that their future would be brighter than the shadows they had emerged from. Utilizing his vast network, Jacob quickly secured temporary accommodation for Ava and Lydia through a local shelter, ensuring them that they had warm, safe place to rest. But he understood that this was merely a stepping stone to a more stable future. Determined to rally the community around them, he decided to share their story. Jacob reached out to local newspapers, community centers, and even hosted a meeting at the precinct narrating the heart-wrenching tale of the little girl's determination to keep hope alive and a mother's undying love amidst adversity. The response was nothing short of overwhelming. Their story touched hearts, eliciting empathy from corners of the community Jacob had never anticipated. Local businesses chipped in, providing essentials ranging from clothing to food. A nearby clinic offered free medical care for Lydia, ensuring she received the treatment she so desperately needed. Neighbors, some of whom Jacob recognized from his patrols, volunteered their time, skills, and resources. They established a fund to help secure a permanent home for the duo, ensuring that the cold nights beneath the bridge became a distant memory. A local school, moved by Ava's dream, offered her a scholarship, ensuring that her aspirations were not merely dreams, but tangible goals. As Ava walked through its corridors, her eyes shining with anticipation, it was clear that a new chapter in her life was beginning. The outpouring of support was a testament to the power of community. Ava and Lydia's story had become a beacon, not just of their personal strength, but of the collective power of humanity when united by compassion. Their tale had transformed from one of despair to a testament of hope. As the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the transformation was evident. The once frail Lydia started regaining her strength, her gratitude evident in her every smile. Ava, on the other hand, thrived in her new environment. School became her sanctuary, a place where she not only learned but shared her experiences, inspiring others with her indomitable spirit. One evening, as Jacob patrolled his familiar streets, he paused beneath the bridge that had once been Ava and Lydia's home. The city lights cast a soft glow on the river below, the water's surface shimmering in the dusk. Reflecting on the journey, he realized that his badge, symbolizing service and protection, had taken on a new meaning. Protecting his community wasn't just about enforcing laws or apprehending wrongdoers. It was about recognizing the unseen struggles, understanding the silent cries for help, and rallying together to uplift those in need. In Ava and Lydia, Jacob had discovered the true essence of his duty, that sometimes the most profound impact he could make was not through authority, but through kindness and hope. The city, with its myriad tales, continued to bustle around him, but for Jacob, amidst the cacophony, there was now a clearer understanding. To serve and protect was to extend a hand, to bridge gaps, and to kindle the flame of hope in the darkest of nights.